Welcome to Nerdbrage, I'm Matt. Have you ever thought to yourself, it'd be really cool to have everything I need for my campaign in like, I don't know, a box or something. Your minis, your maps, your modules, your terrain, etc. Well, that's exactly what these guys did. They put a dungeon in a box. A few years ago, I was checking out subscription boxes specifically for RPG tabletop games. And a lot of the boxes I found were just mystery boxes that came with just a, a bunch of random stuff and t-shirts. Now one stood out above all the rest, and that was Dungeon in a Box. And the reason being is you got everything you needed. Every month you get a new box, and you can continue that campaign or run them as one-shots. Maps, tile terrain, minis, skinny minis, and your module. The campaign that I received was Secrets of Greenwald. It was 12 modules and it took the characters from level 1 up to level 10. Each module is 22 pages, which doesn't really sound like a lot, but there's a lot of content and it's reusable. This is the first book in the Secrets of Greenwald campaign and it's called Caravan of Peril. The first page is your index. It's a really easy and quick reference to find what you're looking for. You have an introduction, adventure table, NPC stats, random encounters, set encounters, and monster stats. This first paragraph says, Welcome to Adventurer. I believe all the modules say this. It tells you that you can run this as part of a campaign or by itself, a standalone one shot. This particular module will level your characters up from one to two. What's really nice is they added in a, a modifier if you want to start your players at a higher level. Or if it's a one shot and you want to run this for fifth level, there's an easy reference how to make it more difficult. This next paragraph starts to go over the legacy stickers. The legacy stickers are a really nice bonus for the players. Now, I don't have the ones specifically for Caravan of Peril, but this will give you an idea of what they are. One gives a member of the party the ability to cast Animal Friendship, and the other one allows a member to cast Command on a citizen, and they automatically fail their saving throw. One of these would be given to the party if they accomplished a particular condition in the game. They wouldn't get both. Now we move on to the introduction, a caravan to Greyhaven. These introductions will lay out where the adventurers are and why they're there. As you can see, I heavily modified mine with a highlighter and wrote all over it. Next we have the adventure table, and this is probably my favorite part of these modules. Each module is different and specific to the campaign you're running, but they are so well done that you could use these in other campaigns and plug these in to other stories. This particular one is a caravan generator. Caravan of Peril starts in a small town. The adventurers get hired to be guards for a caravan that's going through a dangerous area. So what this generator does is gives you a lot of options. Caravan wagon types, it could be someone on a quest, a peddler with wares, a professional on a job, or traders with goods. Underneath each one of those, is very specific things on who those occupants might be. And then lastly includes attitudes. So you have different personality types. This is very helpful to a DM to create a world, create characters, create NPCs that are unique and very different. Now you can read this and pick out exactly what your caravan is gonna look like, or you can leave it up to chance and roll the dice. Also up here, you'll see the caravan master and what he carries. So. If for whatever reason your rogue wants to go, well, rogue and start searching the caravan master's wagon, he knows what he could steal. Next is the NPC page, and let's face it, the NPCs make the world go around. How else would your adventurers find out where to go and who to talk to and give them missions? They're really the unsung heroes. They're not just for killing. I also like this because it is a huge time saver for the DM. Everything is already created, you just need to reference this. And in here I have how he's introduced to the party, his behavior, his personality, his stat block, what he's carrying, and his spells. On the other side I have his secrets, what the players know, and what the players can find out if they start talking to him. We next have another table, which is Random Caravan Encounters. It has 18 different encounters for your characters. You don't have to use all of them. One thing I really like about this, as well as the other tables, is there's so much good information in here, you can use it in other campaigns. Sometimes these encounters become their own little mini stories. It really just depends on what your murder hobos are doing. But it does give the players a way to stretch their legs, encounter the world more, learn more about their surroundings, and have fun. 
the next thing is set encounters and I'm gonna blur those out because that's pretty important to the story and I don't want to give away too many spoilers but this is where your adventures really need to make it to now my players chose some paths that I wasn't expecting we ended up skipping two modules which is okay so it's not a big deal as long as you're getting them back on track as the main story is told and here's where my pro tip comes in if you're going to order Dungeon in a Box, make sure that you have three, four, five months in advance before you start your campaign. That way you have an idea of where the story is going and how you need to get them to that point. It's going to save you a lot of headaches later. After the major encounter, you come to the aftermath, and this is kind of a narrative of what the players have learned. And then the DM gets to deliver the two sweetest words in Dungeons & Dragons, level up. The last page is just a really quick reference for the DM for some monsters that are included in the story. Let's move on to the terrain tiles. Every month you'll get a sheet of punch out terrain. These are very thick, very durable, very good quality. They're printed on both sides. They are specific to each module, but they can be used for other modules and campaigns. For example, the horse. The horse can be used in any campaign, any adventure, anywhere. Put your mini on top, boom, your mini is riding a horse. Now let's talk about maps. Everybody loves maps. You get one sheet, roughly 24 by 18. It's double sided. These are very detailed maps. They're one inch grids. They're specific to the module that you're in, but they can be used in the future. This tavern slash inn can be used in any campaign that has a tavern or slash inn. What adventure doesn't have a tavern or an inn? This tavern map has been used more than probably any other map that we have. Let's move on to the 3D minis. Don't judge, they're not painted. When I subscribed, they included two Reaper Bone minis in each box, and that's fantastic. By the end of the campaign, I had 24 Reaper Bone minis. That's awesome. The bad part is they were random. They didn't match the particular module that you got. I am happy to report that now you get two custom minis that are specific to the modules. I think this also speaks volumes for the company because they saw an area where they could improve, and they did, which leads me into their skinny minis. The first standees were super thin plastic, they were rough edged, and they didn't come out of the master sheet very well. Just like changing from Reaper Bones to a custom mini set, they did improve these skinny minis. It's a thicker product, it's still front and back, but they're a much higher quality. I have over a hundred skinny minis. You can break them down and store them really easy. If you're a traveling DM, these are perfect because you can stack them in some kind of storage container and carry them with you. It's really nice to keep those with you and just have the diversity to be able to pull from that. Their skinny minis are always specific to the module. If there's artwork in the book, that same artwork is on the skinny mini. I've got bandits, drow, good guys, bad guys, monsters, dragons, even animals like simple dogs and sheep. These come in super handy. You also get downloadable content. When I ran my campaign, they had a wanted flyer that I downloaded, printed off, and handed out to my players. It was something tangible that they could hold on to and look at. And as a DM, you have your entire module digitally available to you. Here's a bonus. When you're subscribed, you get digital access to the monstrous one-shots every month. More content is always good. Speaking of bonus, during the research, filming, and editing for this video, I was actually corresponding with Dungeon in a Box in regards to their new content, such as their custom minis and 3D terrain. They went ahead and sent me box one of Voyage of the Fallen Star. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what's in the box. I'm not going to show you everything because there are spoilers. This box can be bought right now or the, the campaign can be bought right now. So I don't want to give you too many spoilers. I'm going to show you a few things, but hopefully not too much. Let's open it up and see what's the same, what's different, and what is absolutely brand new. First off, we have the manual. I'm not going to thumb through it. I'm not going to show you the pages. This is the Star Tide. This will be the first book in a 12 book campaign. At first glance, it looks to have the same format. You have your index on the first page. You have your welcome to adventurers, which will tell you what level this particular module will start and end your adventurers at. It also sets the scene for your adventurers and tells you what reference books you will need. Now, this book is longer. It's 31 pages versus the 22 that I had for Secrets of Grinwald. So we'll set that aside and we'll go to the map and this will not be a spoiler. This is a seafaring adventure. So you will have a ship that your crew will be on. Shows you the top deck and bottom deck. On the other side is the map. And holy crap, this thing is amazing. So this is the ocean of the map that you'll be playing in. Grinwald is right over here. 
Blazing Isles was a part of that campaign, so this is still set in the same world. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. So we'll set those aside. Also, similar to past campaigns, you have the skinny minis. I'm just going to flash that real quick. I love it. Here are the legacy stickers. Now, I can't show these to you, but I can show you the advancement board. This side tracks special icons that you get. The other side tracks legacy stickers on accomplishments. And that allows your players to track them and not lose them, which is what my players did. So in past modules, you would have your NPCs in the book and you could reference them. In the future, if you needed to refer back to them, you would have to go back to that manual. Not a huge deal, but here's what they did. They provided you player cards specifically for NPCs. It's got the stats on the back. I'm not going to turn it around because I don't want to spoil anything. This is awesome. You can keep this behind your DM screen. You don't need the module. You have everything you need right here. You now get 3D terrain, which is super easy to put together. Tab A to slot A, tab B to slot B. You get three cargo boxes. You also get this vendor table. Like I said before, they now include two custom minis for every box instead of the Reaper Bones, which is very cool. This is, this is really neat. Custom mini, it's a tabaxi pirate, which matches the seafaring theme. And then the other one, I hesitated on showing this to you guys, but it's 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 so freaking cool, I have to. It is a crab that has found a home in a dragon skull. Obviously, now it's spoiled. You know that you're going to come in contact with this thing, uh, but you don't know where, so it's not a huge spoiler. I'm really glad they added custom minis to their boxes. Oh, and I didn't even, didn't even discuss how cool this freaking box is. It has sea life on it. Looks like it's been buried in the ocean for decades. The lock handles on the sides. But yeah, that looks really cool. Okay, let's get back to the review. I really like Dungeon in a Box and I think that they're a good company. I think they put out a good product. They even see their shortcomings and improve those. If you like this review, go check them out. I put the link in the description below. Also, if you like the Dirty 20 shirt, it's available at HardenedByDice.com. A lot of other really cool designs there. Thank you for watching. If you like us, don't forget to subscribe and share us with your nerdy friends.